Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to today's session. Uh, this is Nellie Deutsch, and it's going to stay Nellie Deutsch. I'm speaking for myself, and uh, this session is about Moodle. So if you could just add in the chat box where you're from, I'm recording this uh, welcome. I'm recording this uh, to, uh, and we'll be uploading it to YouTube so your names will not appear, so I can make it public and um, the chat box won't be available either. So I see we've got uh, Thomas from Venezuela and Luciana from Brazil, and we've got France, I can see here, and um, other countries will probably be trailing in. All right, so let's uh, just add in the chat box if um, you have used Moodle for face-to-face, uh, -face, blended, or fully online. Okay, so just write blended with Moodle, uh, fully online with Moodle, and face-to-face. -face. Yes, you can use Moodle for face-to-face -face classes. Some people think that uh, that's blended, but it's not really. Okay, so uh, let's get started a little bit about myself. I'm just going to go through this very quickly uh, for the recording. As you can see, I have a degree in educational leadership, which means that I took courses that were connected to education, administration, curriculum, instruction, and not much on technology. Technology was something that I developed on my own, and I've been using technology, by the way, since uh, I would say the late 80s. Yes, uh, the late 80s. All right, so what I do, and I think this is really important to what I'll be talking about later on, is that I mentor teachers. And I just had an interesting email from uh, a colleague from the University of Phoenix who is against any kind, even though, you know, University of Phoenix, he works uh, as an e-teacher, but he hates all the social networks. He hates, he, he can't, he told me, I can't stand Facebook. I can't stand LinkedIn, Twitter, or even uh, the University of Phoenix now has something called uh, Phoenix Connect. He hates the whole thing. And you know what? Hating says it all, I think. If somebody has to hate something, it means that uh, there is a huge gap in the education system. All right, so um, I'm actually faculty at the University of Phoenix. I don't teach them right now, but I am written in as faculty. I teach at Atlantic University. I teach uh, transpersonal and leadership studies. Right now, I'm teaching a course called uh, Leading from the Inside Out, which is really interesting. Um, I have a background in Reiki. I'm a Reiki practitioner. I practice mindfulness meditation, which is meditation with your eyes open, if you like. I meditate uh, as I do things. I also practice the Alexander Technique. There's a lot of learning involved. And learning never stops, okay, because life keeps challenging us with um, amazing things. I'm on the uh, TESOL committee for Call IS, and I also organize the uh, list for higher education in the TESOL. I don't know how I got into that. I guess I like to volunteer, which is what I do. I uh, a great deal of volunteering to help educators and uh, anyone who wants to learn. I've been teaching English. I got into teaching English by, um, I guess, by mistake, you could say, teaching English to speakers of other languages. That's not what I had originally planned to do. Okay, so teaching wasn't a top priority, but it certainly is a top priority uh, with me. I'm known for uh, my expertise in blended learning. I organize 
free, as many free things as I can, as long as I get sponsored in some way. And um, right now it's connecting online. This will be our fifth year in 2014, every February, the first weekend. This year it's going to be the second weekend. I also organize the Moodle Moot. Um, I started in 2011. And I've added Moodle Moots. Moodle MOOCs, sorry, Moodle MOOCs uh, to the equation. I'll be doing three Moodle MOOCs a year. Uh, one Second Life Moodle is going to go into it. And a mindfulness. So if you're interested in joining me in uh, the mindfulness or any of the other MOOCs, you're welcome. And um, a little bit more about my involvement. And I think that's um, about it. I've written a few books. And wish I had more time to write more books and travel more. But uh, there's so much you can do. And uh, time is not a big deal. But uh, as somebody always mentions, Nellie doesn't sleep. So I do need to sleep sometimes. I do believe in what uh, Dr. Sharma Ramesh mentioned yesterday. And that is teaching to learn as a way to uh, to learn and learning to teach. So teaching is a way to learn. I don't know who said that, but I've been saying it for years. So um, I take credit for myself. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. If you've got any questions about uh, anything related or to the session or anything that you'd like to um, ask about, feel free to do so. Just add it in the chat box, and hopefully I'll see it. By the way, I did not spread too much of a word. I did not remind people to come to the session. Um, because I thought that it would be more interesting uh, to see who turned up without getting uh, asked or reminded. A lot of people need reminders, which is one of the reasons why uh, Moodle is so great. For the live online sessions, I know I need reminders. If I don't get reminders, I don't turn up. So I'd like to thank you for not needing a reminder and you turned up uh, without being reminded. Okay, so I appreciate that. Wonderful. All right, I see Dr. Sharma is here. I didn't notice you. All right, so uh, let's get started with uh, why Moodle? Okay, why use Moodle? There isn't that much in the literature. And believe me, I've been searching for research on why Moodle. There are some studies on e-learning, and Moodle happened to me, happened to be the uh, course or learning management system, but not specifically on Moodle. How is Moodle better than other course management systems? like Blackboard? What makes it uh, more, if it is more? Okay, nothing. There's no research, definite research on that. And if you're interested, I am interested, and I'm planning right now, uh, I'm planning on conducting, I started it very vaguely, uh, with um, a medical school. They're interested in learning if Moodle is indeed the right platform to uh, practice medicine, in other words, for interns who are going to be doctors. Okay, so that's something. So if you're interested, let me know. And um, Ramesh, you might be interested in joining me on this. Um, and trying to see really, you know, we talk so much about Moodle. I'm going to be talking a lot about Moodle today, but we haven't done that much as far as research goes, not only for this, but in general. And I'm wondering why. Is it because people like myself are so certain <laughs> that it works? We just feel so certain that everything is, uh, you know, definitely, yes, you can learn so much more, you know, with Moodle, but, you know, what's the truth behind it? All right, um, a little bit about, uh, my involvement with Moodle. First of all, the reason I started Moodle 
was because I wanted to share a class with another class. I was teaching a uh, grade 12 class and we wanted to connect with another class and do a literature project. The only way we could connect and at a distance was through some kind of a an e-learning platform, a course management, learning management system. It was more of a course uh, management system. We tried NiceNet, I don't know, in class, first class, if you're familiar, this is in 2004, I believe. Uh, NiceNet, 2003. NiceNet was very, very primitive. I think in those days they were using uh, na navigation, I forget what it was called. Um, so things were quite primitive. And uh, in the end, my colleague from Montreal suggested that we use Moodle. She made me an admin, and that's how the whole thing started. We were able to co-teach a class. And uh, we used The Giver, the book The Giver. That was our uh, textbook. And that's how we were able to connect the students with the content, with each other, with uh, the two facilitators, myself, and the other teacher. By the way, the other teacher is now in India. She's been all over the world. She contributes her time to teaching uh, around the globe, which is really, really wonderful uh, how things through Moodle, how she became a very, very caring. And I do contribute it to Moodle, uh, a very caring person who goes around the world teaching. She's been to different countries in Africa, uh, in Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and now she's in India. I don't want to write her name because <laughs> she's well known. All right. So the idea for Moodle was for me to teach and to learn, to learn about my students and get as close as I can to them. I use Moodle alongside other technologies. I have never used Moodle by itself. It's always been with other technologies, okay? So it's never been Moodle alone. I use it for the Moodle MOOC, of course, but I also use WizIQ, so it's WizIQ and Moodle. I use them separately, and sometimes I use the WizIQ plugin in the Moodle courses. Um, this, okay, is uh, the Google Drive that I use. Okay, I use Google, I use YouTube videos, I search. So actually, Google is a very important part of uh, what I do and what my students do. They go through uh, Google Drive, that's how they um, practice writing, and they create videos and upload them to YouTube. What's important is support. I think the number one, somebody asked me today, you know, how do you, not me personally, but how does an online teacher make sure that the participants are able to move along? And it is support, whether it's face-to-face -face or online, instant support. And I gave Helena, who's here as an example, Helena asked me a question yesterday, and she didn't get an immediate answer. So she wrote back, Nelly, what is the matter? Right away, you know, uh, she had a sense because she couldn't get hold of me. I wasn't responding right away. But maybe there's something wrong. Okay, so this instant support is very, very important in the online world. But it's not only important in the online world. It's also important in the face-to-face -face world. I, I don't know about you. How many of you teach face-to-face, uh, -face, by the way? If you could just add that in the chat box. Do you teach face to face that means in a physical classroom let's see how many of you oh great so it looks like everybody uh teaches in a face to face okay so you know what i'm talking about i'm wonderful um uh, it's so important to reach each and every one of my our students and we can't do it we can't we can't physically do it there's no time you know, if I have uh, 39 students in a class, some of us have 200, 300, you know, 
in higher education. I had a friend who said she has 2,000 in Sudan. Oh, now she's in Saudi Arabia, so she has less. But in Sudan, she had classes of two. How is she supposed to? And she was working with Moodle. So Moodle is a great way to reach each and every one of our students online. And we can provide support that they need. And the support is so important because they do need us. And they need one another. Okay, and that's where Moodle comes in. So the key here is time. How do you manage time and the support? Because time-wise, it's impossible to reach students. And it's also embarrassing for a lot of students. A lot of students, a lot of my students, feel more comfortable emailing me than um, face-to-face -face -face communication because they're embarrassed. You know, some young people don't feel comfortable in their own skins. You know, they don't have the confidence to face adults, so especially teenagers. So it, it's something that we need to take into account. Moodle allows my students to learn. They have to focus. See, the problem that they have is Facebook and their cell phones. Right now, it's more their cell phones. Their cell smartphones are keeping them awake at night. They're keeping them from focusing in the physical classroom. I don't know about you. How many of you have students with their cell phones on their desks or very close to their, their hands and they take them out every once in a while, even though you say no cell phones, but they still take them out. It's like, you know, cats and, and it's like mice and cats or you know, you, they, they keep, you keep having to, and they're addicted. <laughs> they, they, they just can't stay away from them. Okay, you don't go out to loop, that's good. It's very hard to keep students away from their cell phones. So Moodle forces them. Okay, they have no choice. They're in Moodle and that's it, even though they can use Moodle on their smartphones too. But they need some kind of framework. If they don't have a framework, because the classroom, the physical classroom is not a framework for them. They don't feel confined. Okay, and it's not the teacher. The teacher is not the authority anymore. And not just uh, as far as information goes, but the teacher is not the disciplinary in any sense of the word. You cannot tell your students what to do. They may be polite, but they'll do what they want. Okay, so um, you either use the cell phones in Moodle, but you have to help them, help them um, focus. They have to learn to focus. So Moodle allows me to uh, get my students, allow my students to learn and socially engage. And again, they get the time and the support. Now, what does this do for me? Well, it allows me to see what's going on 24 seven. In other words, there's always somebody in the Moodle, okay? Either in the discussion forums or uh, in the other activities that are there, okay? And I can monitor that. Moodle allows me to track. Every time somebody goes and reads something or does uh, an activity, Okay, so you can say that Moodle is open 24-7, so that there's a sense of support. Students receive ongoing support all the time. The light is always turned on in a Moodle course. And that makes students feel very, very safe. Very, very safe. And the reason they feel safe is because Moodle is a closed platform. It's password protected. No one can go in unless they're invited or uh, unless uh, they're part of the course. Otherwise, no one can go into Moodle, into a course. Okay, you can give a key, create a key. There are different ways of making sure that your students are safe. And this kind of safety is really important. That even though they're used to Facebook and they feel like they, they can say everything, but when it comes to learning, they 
feel that they want to be protected. They will not say things unless they know that they're safe. And again, it's a one-on-one -on -one support that you can provide your students. If a student doesn't understand something, they can send you a message one-on-one -on -one, and you can help them. You can also create groups for each one of your students. It's like having a class within a class. So the groups in Moodle are a great way to uh, get the students to feel that it's you and them. Yes, it is. Safety is very important, even if we don't say it. But when it comes to learning, especially, well, any age, actually, people feel vulnerable. They don't feel comfortable writing. You know, there are people that will not write in a chat box until they get used to it because they feel uncomfortable. There are people who will not write in a discussion forum because they feel stupid. And, and those of you that are used to being online, you may not realize it, but our students do not feel comfortable writing when other students are watching or reading it. Okay, and that's why the one-on-one -on -one and groups in Moodle is so important. But there's also the teamwork. So you've got both. You've got the groups where you can have a few people in a group. If you've got a class of 200, you can divide the class into uh, 20 in each group or depending on the size of your class. So it, you could have teamwork and students working in teams. And this has proven to be a wonderful way to engage students together, but they have to feel comfortable. Okay, so teamwork within groups. Moodle also allows you to have workshops. And I don't know if you know what a workshop is. Anybody try out the workshop? Harriet, have you tried it? Well, it doesn't sound like what it is because actually the workshop, you need to have people in your course. A workshop is peer assessment and it works in a very systematic way. Okay, so if you want to try it, you can try it with other people. Okay, so you, you need to have a few people to peer assess in a workshop or it doesn't work. You can't create a workshop for one person. Okay, it needs to be within a group. Another great thing about Moodle is the multimedia. Now, I don't know any other uh, course management or learning management system that allows the students to add multimedia. It's usually the teacher. The teacher adds you know, the multimedia and that's it. But in Moodle, because of the rich editor, and it is truly very rich, everybody can add multimedia. Okay. The participant as well as the teacher. And we'll take a look at what the rich editor does. Okay, here's an example of a rich editor. As you can see, Okay, um, the arrows, okay, these two arrows at the bottom, one is for the image and the other one is for the video. Another thing that the rich editor has, okay, is the HTML. Now this is important if your administrator allows you to use it because then you can also check and make sure that everything as it should be by going into the HTML or sometimes you can add HTML for images or videos. Okay, but it's not that necessary anymore. Do you recognize this editor for Moodle? Give me a thumbs up if you're very familiar because the rich editor is everywhere. Every activity and resource on Moodle has a rich editor. Okay, so Thomas, your thumbs up. Harriet's very nice to see that you're familiar. Everything 
Because if you're not familiar with it, I suggest you go and practice in the Moodle practice area so you can be familiar. What's also wonderful about uh, Moodle these days, Moodle 2.5, is that everybody is an administrator at every level. There's administration, there's the course administration, there's the uh, discussion administration. Everything is administration, so it makes you feel very good. Yeah, it's called a tiny MC editor. That's right. I call it rich, but yes, that's the exact uh, term. Thank you, Thomas. It's called tiny MC. That's right. So multimedia is really important to our students. They're visual, they're uh, auditory, they like the combination. And notice that you can also upload to every single, and this is so important on Moodle, every single activity, you can upload a file, you can keep a folder of everything, you can also get things from Wikipedia and YouTube videos. You just add the link to a YouTube video and um, it appears as a full video. Now here are some of the activities and resources together. Let's see if you can differentiate between the two, even though it's not important anymore. In Moodle 2.5 they're combined, even though they're separated in the list, but actually they're all the same. Now these, all of these activities and resources have the rich editor. They all have a rich editor, which is wonderful. Okay, so notice there are different assignments, the book, the certificate doesn't come with a raw Moodle. Some of the, um, they're called plugins. Some of the plugins um, do not come in with a raw Moodle, like the certificate, you need to add it. There's also, I added games, by the way, you'll have a chance to practice games in the next Moodle MOOC. I also um, will be adding a help. There's something called help desk. I'll be adding that as well. Okay, so I'll try to add some more. If you know uh, some um, worthwhile plugins, let me know and I'll add them uh, to Moodle for teachers. What happened? No electricity? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll read that later. Sorry, sorry if somebody's having a SCORM as well. That's right. What's a SCORM package? It's like um, a program that you can add to uh, Moodle. You could, you should try it, William. Just go ahead in the practice area. Take a go to Google, Google it, uh, copy it, and you can add it. Yes, uh, Thomas, a help desk, uh, not only for technical things, for everything. It's going to be a little bit better, I think, than the comment box, because a comment box doesn't have a rich editor. And I'm not for anything with that. The message box doesn't have a rich editor either on Moodle. So these are things that I'm not too happy about. Checklist is also something that I've added. You might want to try database. There are lots of things here that you should try. The mind map. Um, I see the external tool is twice. Try them out. You can't hurt anything. And these are the blocks. Okay, the blocks are amazing. And notice there are a few repeats. Uh, the help desk is a plugin. Okay, it's like uh, with IQ, the certificate, Skype. <laughs> yeah. Um, so notice what uh, we've got here. Activities is also a block. All these blocks provide a very rich learning and course management system. Okay, I don't know if you're familiar with all of these. Badges are 2.5. Most of you may not have seen the blocks unless you are the administrator. You will not see blocks or manager. Actually, you can be a manager. 
how many of you um, have had the role or have the role of a manager? Because if you have a role of a manager, have had the role, you should have been, uh, you should have seen the blocks. Yeah, the badges are absolutely great, but the certificates are pretty wonderful too. Okay, another good thing about Moodle is that it's continually improving. I don't know about other, uh, well, I don't know about other uh, course management, learning management system. I know that it takes time. And if it's not open like Blackboard, it's a whole, people who use Blackboard keep complaining to me, Nelly, you're not going to believe this. I mean, Blackboard is not open. They're trying to be more open, but it's not with course sites, I believe. There's ongoing updates and you always know what's going on. Now, what do you do with the old stuff? Well, you don't have to pack it. You just update and it goes on very smoothly. I also use WizIQ in my Moodle and I find it very, very useful because again, if you want to have a closed and safe environment for your students, you don't want them to go outside of Moodle. You want everything in Moodle. And I think that's uh, very important, especially for K-12, but also for university students. Uh, is there a question there that I'm not seeing? I'm sorry. Um, you, you mentioned something about uh, February, I did send something. Somebody asked me about uh, the, I think Luciana, you must have asked me about uh, the Moodle practice area. Is that what you're asking about? That'll be available until the, until February, yes, until the end of January. We're going to keep it open for everybody to practice. And then you'll get a new one. There's always going to be a Moodle for practice area. Okay, that's going to continue in February as well with, with a new, hopefully we'll have some new um, plugins, new um, applications. Uh, Thomas asked, what do you use? Oh, you've never tried it, Thomas? How many of you have tried the WizIQ in Moodle? Actually, WizIQ is a plugin. It's an activity in Moodle. I don't know if you've noticed that. Let's go back. Uh, yes, but you, oh, how do I use it? Uh, I create uh, live sessions for my students and it's, it's a private, it's a private class. And sometimes I allow the students to uh, create it for themselves. And they do their teamwork, their group work in the live classes. Okay, so you can either uh, facilitate or let them facilitate. And we go over different points. Sometimes they need extra help. Like I said, one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes I create classes uh, for students one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, like this was IQ class. But I do it through the Moodle. The minute you do it through the Moodle, it's a closed environment. It's, it's like a closed school where everything is there and you don't have to go... Um, outside of uh, the Moodle. I don't know, have you seen this? By the way, all this is clickable. It's um, in the courseware. So if you go to the courseware, you'll be able to get the PowerPoint presentation and it's all clickable. Um, I hope Joyce will be with us at, um, oh, I just mentioned her name. I asked if you knew who had created this. Um, I hope she'll be with us uh, at the next Moodle MOOC in um, February. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, thank you. So she created this and she was really surprised. Her name is Joyce. She was really surprised that it went viral. Everybody uh, started uh, changing this to different languages, used it for different things. But this is a Moodle tool. This is the old Moodle. For teachers, I don't know if you like following uh, very structured 
one, two, three. How many of you like such structured uh, guide? Give me a thumbs up if you like uh, such structures. I'll give me my thumbs down. I don't like one, two, three. I, I can't focus on one, two, three. But um, I would say that most people do <laughs> for making classes. Um, read instructions. Yes. Um, you know, it's like life, you know, if somebody told you this is how you should live your life, one, two, three, you know, it would be a joke. Um, I, I consider learning and education, uh, you know, something that's comparable to life. So I, I can't live like this. I can't learn like this. But, you know, I think it's wonderful. It looks it's very attractive if you can go through it. And if you can manage to understand it, then um, it's great. Okay, so have a look at it. It's the only thing that's available, actually. Now for a little quiz. Okay, so uh, if you're not looking at the slide, you won't be able to go to the next one. So um, I'd like you to, uh, there are question marks, and you can call this red. Um, I'm going to give you, uh, let's see, Michelle, give you tools and see if you can not go to the next slide and write, what is this? Okay, see if you can uh, just write with the uh, text, okay, use your keyboard and see if you can come up with uh, the answer to the questions. There we go. Okay. Everybody has tools. Let's see if you can come up with what the red, light blue, royal blue, and uh, pinkish purple, I guess. Now, notice what's happening. Nobody's writing. Nobody's writing. And why is that? Because it's intimidating, which is why on Moodle this would not happen. It would be one on one. Uh, you know, it would be safer. But right now you're exposed. Okay, you're exposed. You're, you've been given writing tools and you're told, okay, what is, uh, what is in red? Okay, what is in blue and so on. And it is intimidating, isn't it? Okay, nobody wants to try. It's easy to write in the chat box because you've had practice with that. But going to the whiteboard is almost like going, you know, to the board and uh, writing an answer. Oh, somebody's brave. Let's see. Somebody's on the red. <laughs> They're running red. Okay, it's very, very difficult to uh, be exposed like this. So keep this in mind. And don't look at the PowerPoint. Oops, somebody opened up something. Yeah, I don't think that's going to help. Nope, somebody did it again. Uh, let's see. Did that again. All right, so I'll take away the tools as uh who was it um i believe it was um steven who said nelly take away their tools <laughs> all right so we've got some ideas but it is a very uncomfortable so think of your students when you you know a lot of math teachers do this they tell their students to come to the uh, boards and write the answer to some equation it is a very tough thing so, any guesses? Let's go to the answers. There we go. That wasn't so hard, was it? Okay, you had no clues. All right. So, the user blocks, activities, and resources. 
if you had to put something in the center, what would you write in the center? What is this? There's something missing in the center. What's missing? Moodle. Moodle what? You know, Moodle is just a uh, course management system. Any other guess? <laughs> yeah, layout of what? Very good. Ramish. Together you'll get the answer, by the way. You know, it's so much easier when people write their ideas and then eventually the answer comes out. So layout of what? Moodle book. <laughs> no, William. William, you haven't been practicing in the practice in the Moodle practice area. If you had, you would know. What where do we see a user activity blocks and resources? Layout of what? You are stumped. Okay. It's a course. It's a course. Who would like to come up and write the word course? Any volunteers? I'll give you uh, writing tools. Just raise your hand or give me a thumbs up if you'd like to come up and write the word course. It's not a course page, it's just a course. Every course has these elements. Any volunteers to write? Okay, we've got a volunteer. Okay, thank you, Luciana. You hands up <laughs> William it's easy to tell others eh all right so what you have to do um Luciano oh you have to do is go into uh, a you'll see a a is for text and then you can start writing the word course of course oh Harriet has her hand up too so Harriet let me give you uh, as well uh, maybe the two of you can each write the word course. Okay, now I can see here, I can see that, let's see who, Harriet is writing it. Harriet is writing, Harriet has more experience. Uh, okay, so Harriet is writing, that's wonderful Harriet. Okay, she wrote the word course. Now she has to take it to somewhere in the middle. And you want to get the right size. Luciana, you need practice. Uh, I don't see Luciana, I don't see you there at all. You need practice, all right? So um, you need pra ah, there we go. Now you need to change the color, right? Uh, you need to change it to white because you've got it in black. Or you need to change the background, okay, one or the other, so that it'll look right. You see, it's not easy, but practice does make uh, things go a lot faster, okay? So practicing will save you time in the end. So get as much practice as you can in the Moodle practice area there. I think you just need to, oh, it's coming. I think you're making it larger. We can see it um, coming through. Oops, who did that? So Luciana, you're the one playing around. You're the only one that has it right. Now we found you. Or was that, ooh. So we know now know who's doing it. It's Luciana. Not on purpose. It can't be Harriet. Harriet, are you doing that? All right. That's one way of catching. <laughs> All right, so what you need to do actually um, is you go into the A, you need to change the color. Okay, so the color should be white. And then we want to make it as large as possible. So I'm going to make it large as possible. 
okay and then i'll write the word course okay there that's how simple it is okay there i've done it okay i'll take harriet there okay now it's done that's how easy it is there okay so actually it looks the same as the powerpoint presentation you can't really see the difference can you all right so that's one way we can make it larger maybe it's not big enough make it larger i think the largest you can make it is um i don't know what the largest but there it is and once you write it you simply click on it and you can move you can get your students to practice writing on the whiteboard they will love it okay let's continue all right so practice okay practice practice and practice okay this is your chance to really uh try things out with others and do not be afraid because you're going to be doing this on your own okay so practice in moodle for teachers you can practice using WizIQ and all the other moodle features that i've mentioned and this is whoops notice what's <laughs> what's on the whiteboard now can you see that? I don't know why it's, oh, there's the word. I see it went with us. Let's see if it goes through. Nope. Interesting. I don't know if you're able to see it. It came and it went. Let me try again. Okay, here we go. Ah, uh, there we go. Make a choice. You saw that. And, okay, did you see that? Okay, let's see if you got it. If you got it, write it in the chat box. Okay, I'll do it again. Okay, so what am I telling you? I'm telling you to make a choice. Make a choice. It's up to you. And this is what it's all about. This is what they don't teach you at school. This is what you don't get one, two, three. Life gives us opportunities for growth disguised as challenging circumstances. A lot of things happen to us and we think, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. But these are really opportunities that if we take them, we can become the change that we want. Any questions? Well, if you'd like to ask questions, you can post them on the Moodle and uh, I'll give you a response 24 seven. If I don't, somebody else will. So questions, we've got a few um, minutes. That's right, be the change, exactly. But you gotta take the opportunity. That's right, William. Make a choice, be the change that you wanna see. Exactly. Any questions? Thank you, Thomas. Any questions? Anything you'd like to ask? Personal questions about Moodle? Comments you'd like to make about your experiences with Moodle? By the way, that's not my dog. I don't have a, um, my dog, my last dog, a little poodle died about a year and a half ago, and I don't have a dog, so my kids have dogs. This is my son's dog, <laughs> and uh, my daughter has a dog too. So they bring the dogs over. Yeah, it is funny. Questions? Um, that change is very sad. Mine died too. She was, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it is sad. It was very sad. The case of my last dog was really, her name was Frenchie, was really sad. Very, very sad. Uh, William says, Moodle is really a very interesting concept. Any idea who created the first one? You mean the first course, um, Martin Dogiamas, uh, who presented at the first uh, Moodle MOOC in uh, June, created it 
as part of his uh, PhD, he wanted to have some kind of um, e-learning platform, but I'm not sure it was launched in 2002. I'm not sure um, who created the first uh, course. Yes, 24 seven means that Moodle is open 24 seven. The light never goes out in Moodle. You can get support 24 seven. If it's not from one teacher, it could be a co-teacher. It could be from um, the participants. Someone's always there to provide you with a response. Another question, if I might, are Moodle's always free or does one have to? No, Moodle, to install Moodle is free. Uh, sometimes if you have a huge Moodle, to upgrade it could be complicated. Um, so you may need someone expert to do it for you. But um, it's open source, that's right. Dr. Ramesh is right, it's open source and hosting, you can host it for very little. There's um, Gatover or Alligator or Gator. Um, don't go to GoDaddy if you want to get a Moodle. Don't use GoDaddy because GoDaddy's don't support Moodle 2.5. GoDaddy only support Moodle 2.2, I think that's the most, and they will not support a friend of mine tried and uh, he's very sorry because it's for a language school and he has to leave, uh, which is very complicated. He has to leave uh, GoDaddy. They don't provide uh, support for that. So you have to make sure that they do support Moodle 2.5. And that's it. All right. If you have any other questions, feel free to post them in either Moodle for uh, teachers, beginners, or Moodle for teachers, non-beginners. And if you're interested in the certificate, follow the instructions in Moodle for teachers, beginners, or Moodle for teachers, non-beginners. Are the plug, no, the plugins are free, Harriet. Uh, With IQ is not, but the, most of the plugins are free. Unless you want to have a special plugin developed for you, and that's also possible. All right, so thank you everyone for joining, and I'll be uploading this to YouTube and sharing it in the courseware on WizIQ. So I hope everybody has joined uh, the course at WizIQ so that you can get all the content. And if you have any questions, you can also ask them there too. So bye for now, everyone. Have a great week.